Brian, the first thing I have to ask you is, what made a bunch of powered parachute folks think it would be a great idea to come to a rotorcraft event? Oh, uh, we were approached um, by uh, Scott Lewis and them uh, to bring the power parachutes down. Uh, they're wanting to build this into a, a big uh, event every year. Uh, we figured the um, rotorcraft guys and the power parachute guys were a good fit, so we proceeded on and we ended up having a great event. Well, both kinds of aircraft are low and slow aircraft. You guys fly mainly dawn and dusk and the gyros fly a lot in the middle of the day. It, it, it seems like it was ideal. It was a great fit. I mean, so we get up early in the morning. Uh, we're usually in the air at this time of the year, you know, 6:30, and we fly till 8:30, 9 o'clock. And the gyro guys, um, they're basically just getting started, but uh, they have the luxury of going all day long. And then, like I say, we start back up 6, 6:30 in the evening and go till dark. So yeah, it was a good fit. It worked out well. Explain the appeal of powered parachutes, because one of the things that struck me when I walked through your campsite uh, on your end of the airport was that there were folks here who had a lot of money invested in their aircraft and obviously could have bought light sport aircraft or rotorcraft or old Cessnas or what is it that draws people to this kind of aircraft? For one, it's a very easy aircraft to fly. I mean, you basically have three controls. You have two foot bars, one to go left, one to go right, and you have a throttle to take you up and down. So it's very easy to learn to fly. Most of the people like the slow flight. We go maybe 30 mile an hour at the most. If we get a good tailwind, we can go faster. And it's also a very safe aircraft. So I think the, the, the easeability of training and, and learning to fly and plus the safety factor is, is really what sells the units. Do events like this contribute in any way to the availability of training? Do they become a place where people come early and take training, or is, is it not really developed to that yet? Because in the gyroplane world, that happens a lot. I would like to see it go in that direction. Right now, the power parachute people are, are great people. It's like a family situation where we go and we get there. Our concentration is, since we have a limited time in the morning and evening to fly, uh, we just like to get up and fly and have fun. But uh, I'd like to make time to be able to, if people want to come in and we can have classes or something of that nature to get them uh, into the sport, I think it's a, a real good idea. We need to do that. Where do you see equipment going in this sport? Because it, it obviously, for people who were uh, in touch with the original ultralight movement, things look a lot different now than they did 20 or 25 years ago. Where is it going in the future? I hope to see it with different engines and uh, uh, different um, material with the aircraft that's going to become safer. Uh, hopefully we can make some lighter aircraft. You know, aviation, everybody knows, is expensive to get into. So I would like to see somehow we could build some aircraft to get the dollars down to allow more people to be involved in that. And I think it's going to have to be done with engines that are a little bit stronger but lighter and also uh, some ways of doing the airframes differently. How many folks turned out for this on the powered parachute side? Uh, the last t count I got as far as power parachutes themselves uh, is about 50 of them, so I'm going to say two people came with each one, so we probably got 100 to 150 people. Well, this seems like an ideal airport environment for this kind of event for you guys. Is it tough to find an event or an airport where you're welcome? Guys have run into that problem. Uh, my business is actually located in Plymouth, Indiana, and they're very, um, I'll call it ultralight or power parachute friendly. But we've had some stories of guys having problems for power parachutes to get on the airports, which uh, hopefully that will be also a problem solved. Uh, but uh, for the most part, uh, the fly-ins, I mean, this is unique to have it at an airport such as Mentone. Most of the fly-ins are done at, uh, out in farmer's fields or you know any place that you can find enough grass to take off from is basically for power parachutes, which is another selling point for them or good, you know, you unique thing about them. Well, given the good food in the canteen and the indoor plumbing, do you think you'll be back? You know, I was talking to Scott about that, and I, I'm 99.9% .9 sure we're going to be back. Uh, they've been great. They have made a point to make sure the power parachute people are taken care of here, and the facility, everything was great. The fireworks last night, so I'm pretty sure we're going to be back next year. Aero TV is brought to you by the beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology.